Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Tuesday the 6th of April comes to you from London and uh, we're back after the Easter break. Uh, pretty cold in Europe and the coronavirus stats uh, on the continent uh, still an issue which we'll look at at the end of this session. So we start by looking at currencies, then uh, stock markets, uh, bonds, uh, precious metals and then um, energy uh, so we st see here the long-term, medium-term and short-term view of the market. This is the dollar index. Dollar is short-term bearish, but the medium-term chart, the trend continues. We are just seeing a little bit of dollar weakness. We still do have an upside target, so I'm 5% higher. The euro back above 118 on that slightly weaker dollar, uh, but this is just a counter-trend move, really. We're seeing that uh, euro weakness is very much the trend. And against the yen... Uh, this is the telltale for the dollar. We're holding that 110 level, so still uh, a 12 month high is still very much there. Sterling sitting at 138.50, um, so just a bit weak against the dollar and against the euro, we're at 117.28. So we're seeing a fall away today as well, but the trend is very clear. Sterling appreciating against the euro over the last few months. Looking at Bitcoin, we're sitting at $58,800, so that's looking stronger. And the S&P 500 index is also uh, was strong on uh, Friday, so we're seeing that uh, push higher. Uh, the Nasdaq um, also looking higher. Uh, these markets actually opened in the U.S. yesterday, so um, we've got pains for those. The futures are lower today, down uh, a third of a percent on the S&P future and down 0.4% on the uh, Nasdaq, the VIX volatility sitting steady uh, at 18. So no real fears showing up in the markets there. The FTSE future is up 1.3 this morning, playing catch up with that US move. And there's the DAX in Germany up 1% as well, brushing off coronavirus uh, fears and looking at the uh, French market up just over two thirds of a percent. Japan was down one and a half percent. So not looking so strong there overnight, but the trend is still very much up uh, a big move really from 10,000 to 17,000 over the last 12 months. So Japan looking very strong there. Uh, we saw the Hang Seng up 2%, China actually flat, uh, and the Sensex in India also flat. The Aussie market up overnight 0.8%. Still struggling to make new highs, but uh, looking better there. Gold actually has has had a good uh, few days. We we certainly saw us coming back to test this uh, level here around 1670, 1665. A fall through that level now would be bad and we would activate this downside target some 26% lower. Uh, on the long term chart, we're still above the cloud on the lagging line, but medium term bearish, short term bullish. So that will be one to watch. And silver sitting at $25. Uh, also just looking a little bit better on that short-term chart. U.S. bond yields, uh, we're sitting at 1.71% on the 10-year and on the 30-year bond sitting at 2.35. So we have come back a little bit, hit resistance at about 2.5%. So it'll be quite interesting to see whether we push higher. But we do have, especially on the 10-year, we do have this upside target to 3.3%, um, almost double where we are now. The energy mix this morning, we're seeing energy prices higher, not enough to move uh, crude out of the range. We put our energy report out to clients this morning. Uh, we're seeing here um, that we are pretty much flat on crude oil. Same on uh, uh, WTI, 57 is the support level there. And on US Nat Gas, we did pull back. We failed to hold the breakout. So we're sitting at those 250s. We do have downside targets on the one minute chart to watch for. Uh, looking at gasoline prices, that's looking uh, better. We've got good upside targets there. Uh, coal prices looking bullish and emissions looking more bullish as well. All in the report and we've turned more bullish on gas this week. Not much change on our outlook for German power, just more targets there. And again, we put out uh, that in our report. And if we look at uh, the standout, that's Nordic power having broken out of this uh, triangle falling lower with downside targets. So that is bucking the trend against other power markets. Looking at the uh, coronavirus stats, this is cases in Europe. France still rising, 584 cases per million versus 52 in the UK. So more than 
10 times the number of cases, France to the UK, and uh, Germany just pulling back a little bit, but also nearly four times as many cases. Uh, so that's quite significant. And the US really flatlining, uh, again, around four times the uh, UK average here. That's quite worrying. Greece, seeing its cases still continuing to rise. So, um, But most other places, we're starting to see falls in cases with hard lockdowns uh, managing to suppress uh, the growth in the virus. Looking at the death rate, Poland uh, not looking good at all. Uh, mostly France and Germany flat. The UK continues to fall at uh, 0.52 per 100. So um, looking better there. And the US also uh, falling. But Hungary uh, still looking bad. And a, mo a lot of these Eastern Euro European rates Greece still rising as well, so that's uh, not good news there either. And if we look at uh, Italy, for example, uh, it's rising as well. Looking at the vaccination rates, starting to catch up now, 17 and 18 percent, uh, UK 54 percent, still around triple though. Uh, and we have seen big moves, uh, Hungary uh, pushing higher with um, utilising uh, Chinese and uh uh, uh, Russian vaccine, so they're pushing higher there as well. But uh, still uh, a lot of uncertainty in continental Europe, especially on these uh, case rates, and that's something to watch over this coming week on the charts. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you then.